Is there anything in France, uh, either a Q&A produced by French Customs or some kind of support tools or something like that that exists at the moment or is in preparation that you know of? Uh, not really. Uh, the, the only thing I can tell you right now is that the, the French Customs uh, is, is getting prepared to, uh, to have those checks set at the border by uh, hiring another 700 uh, custom officers which would should be uh, should be done by 2020 uh, right now they already hired a, a little bit like 250 custom officers but that's about it right now I mean you know they, they have uh, they have obviously uh, they have uh, set up uh, some um, help desk for the uh, for the hauliers uh, on a regional basis to help hauliers uh, with the new custom regulations and, and the new custom procedures that will be set up but that's about it I mean you know and so we, we've talked about government preparedness and you know ports preparedness, infrastructure preparedness, um, but obviously industry preparedness is also very important. Uh, when you look at your members, what percentage would you say roughly are well prepared or uh, starting to prepare? How, how many are just waiting to see what happens and how many are just ignoring the whole thing? Well, I, I, don't, I don't want to give um, uh, like a percentage because it will be uh, of course uh, wrong but clearly um, we have two two different groups um, the um, the group the group of the big companies uh, with a lot of people uh, real big big companies that are able to as it was explained this morning to set up working groups to with all the different uh, services and department and, and dedicate some time to, to, to this, even scoping or, 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 um, all the different scenarios. But this is a minority, clearly, uh, in, in the French Shippers Council. Um, the vast majority is companies, even big groups, uh, where the Brexit is still stuck in the custom department. And the, the, the person there in charge of customs or uh, VAT yet did not manage to push this topic to uh, general management or, or uh, let's say, higher level board or anything like this. Some of the, some of the members uh, uh, I discussed uh, for, for the, this, this uh, conference told me that they, they've, they tried, but they've been, they've been uh, sent back to their uh, goal, saying, okay, do you know what will happen? No. Okay, so you will come back when you, when you will have... Uh, uh, a real a real plan and when we can start to work on facts and and, and, and clearly before the political agreement uh, in, of December I guess um, many people in France I don't know uh, elsewhere in Europe so that there is a white rabbit that will come out of the hat at the end the last day <laughs> saying okay <coughs> um, and first of May <laughs> yeah, and, and the political agreement um, in this respect has not helped uh, the people, um, at least for customs, to, to, to push the topic, to, 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 because they, they've been answered that, okay, you see that now it's, it's in the process, we will have like an, a, a, a transition period, the fact that it's not signed, it's not, you know, it's not put it in the headlines of, of the, of the, uh, um, journal or etc or the papers so so it, it's even more and more difficult the more the it advances the, the more it is difficult to to push the topic and make it uh, taken really at the at the company level is that also your your perception well yeah the the what you have to understand also for the haulier sector in france is that the majority of the hauliers are are small and medium sized company more than 80 percent of the of the companies, a small and medium sized company. Obviously, for big groups of big companies, it's much easier because they're already involved one way or the other uh, into international operations. So, custom is not an issue for them. Uh, now, again, for the 80 remaining percent, or 80, more than 80 percent, uh, small and medium sized company, they, they again, they, for, they forget or they don't have the expertise in terms of custom. So, they have to train. Uh, what you have also to understand is that in France, uh, the French haulier industry lost, for the last uh, 15 years approximately, 80% of market share in international. So most of the hauliers in France are not 
familiar with any kind of export procedures. So they start from uh, quite far away. Uh, but again, French Customs is, is ready to help. Um, some of our members do not, I mean, they're just waiting to see what, what's going to happen. Some of them also already are thinking already to train uh, inside people with custom procedures. And uh, what you have to understand also is if you want to uh, comply with a UCC uh, skill requirement for a customer representative, it takes at least two years. So we're right on the track. If I, may, if I may just uh, put in something on, on what um, Terry said, is that it's right and the same for shippers that um, many, many shippers are already involved in, in, in international trade. They know how to handle with some, some uh, custom declaration. <coughs> but there is a change of scale there, which they will surely have some difficulty to, to cope with. Um, many of the, of the, of the companies are, are, have, like, some part uh, of their um, turnover in international trade. But if you had the UK, then it doubles or triples. Uh, so then it's, uh, there is a, a real change in scale that it impacts on human resources, etc. Et mm. And uh, Tom, how about uh, the companies that you're in touch with, either customers or uh, fellow members of Evo Finidex or other fellow uh, First of all, with, with, with Evo Finidex, we quite often have um, meetings uh, like like brexit but also the, the um, one of the points of the brexit meeting is also that we want to talk with with it uh, while this is a critical item um, if you can optimize your your completely process then uh, that would be that make life much easier for for our customers so what we do is uh, that is not only done by, 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 by those councils like the Shippers Council from uh, the Evo Venedex, but also <laughs> we, we ourselves, we have meetings with, with uh, a lot of customers and that is a uh, Brexit meeting, but it is more uh, IT rela related. So uh, a lot of people from IT are, are there because they want to know what kind of information should we provide to customs and to other author uh, authorities, tax authorities, if Bre Brexit will be effect. And that helped us enormous. Uh, there are also some people, uh, of course, uh, one of the stakeholders is uh, one custom, customs specialist who can, can explain the, the, the completely uh, um, uh, classification about products and, and also the, the, the consequences if you are doing this wrong or not quite well prepared. And this is uh, wordful information for the IT. And that is that is what we see now. We have that every two months. We have those those mi frequent meetings with with our customers. Not all of them, 50%. The other 50% is just watching. Okay, what will do my neighbour? And maybe I can do the same. It's, uh and Aidan, uh, in Ireland, because this is such a big concern, do you feel that your members and and the uh, company base in Ireland more generally are they better prepared for Brexit? Um. No, uh, I don't think anybody is, um, because we don't know what the outcome is going to be, and that, that is a serious issue. Um, uh, it, it's uh, very much the SME sector. I mean, you look at the haulage uh, in Ireland, international hauliers, the average size uh, company has 4.5 trucks. Um, those guys don't have uh, the wherewithal uh, to be able to invest um, in uh, future proof in their business, in, you know, where there's uncertainty about where, where they have to go and what they have to do. Um, so there's a lot of work uh, to bring those guys um, into whatever the, the next phase is going to be. Um, and a lot of support requirements are going to be had uh, to, to make that happen in a speedy way. But I think uh, a lot of the conversations are saying that there could be, you know, once we know we can actually implement something, uh, but it's going to take a massive amount of time um, uh, to upskill, uh, prepare, um, you know, modernise uh, systems and all that type of stuff. Um, 
Um, so while bits and, and bobs are being done in, in relation to preparation, like some of the big uh, leaders are, are only really getting around, the influencers, the big multinationals are getting around um, to reviewing uh, what the consequences are. Um, that was mentioned earlier on about you can scenario map this and that and, and you can look at options where we're, where we're concerned and, and where we're trying to link in and promote this is that um, the actual haulage sector and every other part of the supply chain, um, it participates in those conversations sooner rather than later. Um, and I don't think, um, certainly in Ireland, um, we're close to that happening. Uh, the bigger guys are beginning to talk about AEO. Uh, they are beginning to ask questions. Uh, what, what should I expect of my contractors? Um, so I, I would expect uh, momentum around all of this to obviously um, Know, stating the obvious, uh, increase once we get more information. Um, but like everything else, um, uh, how much time then is there? Uh, I think the smart guys are, are really trying to uh, engage people, um, but, but there's not an awful lot of that going on. So obviously there might be a need for larger companies to support their smaller suppliers, uh, providers and so on. And uh, obviously for UK entities that might be slightly more advanced in terms of preparing to support also their colleagues and other entities and convince them they need to do something. Um, Piotr, in terms of, of transport, uh, obviously the UK market is an important market and accessing it internationally is also important for Polish hauliers uh, and for UK shippers who use the services of Polish hauliers. Um, are they considering any mitigating factors or contingency plans should the two sides fail, you know, it's unlikely, but should they fail to get some kind of market access arrangement agreed uh, for, for transport? Are they looking at ECMT permits as an emergency solution? Well, um, permits are surely are not solution for us, that is crystal clear. Um, but uh, if you ask about uh, if we are preparing for the Brexit, because it was the first question, the, the answer would be also the question, but what kind of Brexit do you mean, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, we don't have any like frames that uh, we can already rely on and uh, around these frames try to build up something new. So uh, before there will be any agreement taken on the political level, uh, surely my companies will not start any, any serious preparations from the, for the Brexit. Um, of course, at, this is the same case as the colleagues from, from France. There are some big companies that uh, probably are doing something, but uh, again, as the, the huge majority of the companies, they are the medium or a small or a micro companies, uh, surely they will not invest money now uh, to, to prepare because the, any preparation means also spending some money, right? And uh, for, the, for the micro company, um, that is going to prepare for Brexit, even if they don't know what this Brexit would look like. It's absolutely just a waste of money. And also referring to, to my colleague from Ireland said, um, you must be aware that uh, for our companies, there are many other problems right now which are on the agenda. And obviously this is a mobility package that we are working on. And actually this is my, my main duty. That's why I'm, I'm based in Brussels, I'm working on that. We have also the issues like a driver shortage, we have the issue of the increase of the salaries. And uh, from that perspective, Brexit cannot be a, a top priority. Although, as I said, uh, the, the consequences will be very big, but uh, the consequences will depend on what will be the agreement, what will be decided, and it is on the politi politician side to decide on that, right? So. Uh, for the time being, it's my association that is trying to, to, to influence our politicians. It's also trying to influence IRU in Brussels, but obviously this is uh, your association and especially uh, you, Pauline, and, and Sarah, which are doing a great job there. And uh, this is what we can do right now. And I think we cannot do anything more than that, unfortunately. So we have time for maybe a couple of questions from the, from the floor. Uh, there is a rolling mic, so if you have a, a burning question to uh, any of the members of the panel about what they advise their members to do, or you want to know how certain things are perceived in their, in their countries, um, you can take them. Uh, if, if not, uh, then I, I, I would like to, to ask you, and, and very short answers, please, uh, in conclusion. Uh, if you had only one final message to uh, Mr. Mar Barnier, 
and Mr. Davis, who are the chief negotiators on both sides, what would it be? Short and sharp, please. Okay, for, for Mr. Davis, clarify the situation as fast as possible. And for Mr. Barnier? Do your job. <laughs> We need, we need something quick. And, and the, the, the transition period should be used as a preparation, or if, if any transition, or it should be used to, to, to prepare and not wait for any rules to be known. Aidan? Um, look, I, I would suggest uh, not getting bogged down in deadlines um, and listen to the industry. Um, I think it's, it's fundamentally important on, on every side that that's done. Um, uh, and who says one year is going to work? I think there needs to be a bit more flexibility built into solutions. Piotr? So maybe a bit censored version of the famous uh, politician uh, from, from, UK, uh, from the United States saying so, economy first. <laughs> <laughs> Tom? would be your message yeah, Mr. Barney and Mr. Davis? Everything is already said on this table, but uh, I think we want uh, clearly a an, an decision. And we, we don't want to wait till October or even later. So uh, we cannot wait. So I'm, I, have a I have a company to run with a lot of people, so we are still uh, preparing ourselves. But it would help us if we could uh, get quickly in the decision that we wait, that we at least know which direction it goes. Because this morning, it was nice what was told by uh, your, uh, was it, uh, Mr. Walker, that there was, no, there was no decision made yet. So that is, that is still, it's still a gray area. So please come quickly with concrete actions. Then we can, we can take action too. There's a, there's a question uh, here in the middle from Chris. Yeah, Chris Palmer. Um, we've got three possible outcomes to Brexit. A hard Brexit, a soft Brexit, or no deal. I'd like the panel's views on how much does the fact that the UK is the first country to think about departing from the EU could be tilting the attitude of the Commission because they'll be setting a precedent for any others that might be following. Maybe, maybe I can answer from the Brussels perspective. It is, it is crystal clear, and when the negotiations started, some prominent European politicians were saying that uh, the Brexit deal cannot be an ideal deal, because otherwise the other countries would like to follow the same way, right? So uh, whatever will happen, the, the European politicians will try to have it in that way, that uh, certain consequences will be uh, visible. That, that, that's it. So uh, that's the idea of this of these negotiations. Otherwise, the other countries will follow the same way. Uh, it, it is it is a very harsh statement what I'm saying, but uh, well, that's what I'm hearing from the debate in Brussels, and I'm not satisfied with that. But it's true. Yeah. There seems to be a lot of agreement yeah. uh, on the on the panel. Um, well, that's obvious. I mean, the message needs to be clear also. To all, all of the European countries who might want to uh, uh, get out of the of the European, but there's not much of them apparently. But still, you know, if if it's if it's easy, then you know, okay, no problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, in spite of that, of course, Brexit is a fact, and uh, we all need to prepare for it as best as we can. And as always, the logistics industry, uh, whether retailers, manufacturers, logistics companies or hauliers will demonstrate, and others, will demonstrate that uh, it can race to the challenge and do uh, its job as best as possible, as long as it has sufficient clarity to rely on uh, and enough time to, to adapt. Uh, so I think that's, that's pretty clear. If I, if I just may add one thing, just, just make sure all of you here that, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that all of us will agree with that. Mm -hmm. uh, we, are, we are ready to help you all to get through this and, and we'll not leave you alone. That's, that's no issue. 
Yeah, and uh, I can also say that uh, Brexit is this one only, uh, this is a one part of the of the big problem, which is a crisis of the European identity, which can be, you know, happen in this or that way. And uh, what what happened in the UK can also happen in, in the other countries. And uh, I, well, personally, I, I'm involved in the European affairs for like 15 years, and uh, well, it's a, it's a great disappointment for me. All of the, what's happening now in Europe, it is not in the UK, but also the other countries, and maybe including my country as well. So uh, I think we, we all share the, the, the same opinions here that uh, we don't want uh, any other Brexit, we don't want any other uh, you know, uh, problems with the other countries and uh, trying to, to leave EU. We just want to find the, the solutions that would be the best for, for all of us, because at the end of the day, we are still part of this big European family, and there is like no other way.